Hey everyone, I forgot to turn my fan off. There we go. So last time we created Sonic's shoes, and this time we're going to be working on making his body. Might as well just start off with a cube for his torso. Move it up on the z-axis to where you want his body to be. The higher you place it, the longer his legs will have to be to connect to it. So if you want some creepy looking Sonic Enderman type thing, just put it like but way up there, let's get, get, get some creepy Sonics. Once it's placed, go into the modifier tab and add a subdivision modifier. I like to keep optimal display off, but that's just a personal preference. Now is the fun part where we try to shape the body. You don't have to pay as much attention to the editable geometry on the cube, just keep an eye on the subdivided mesh as you move stuff around. Sometimes a simple cube just isn't enough geometry to get the shape that you want, so add loop cuts wherever you see fit. I ended up making his torso a little longer than I expected, so I'm going to reposition it. I'm trying to keep my Sonic pretty low poly. If you want to go for higher poly, you can turn your subdivision level up to 2, maybe even 3 or 4 if you're making a Sonic movie or something, but probably won't ever need more than that. Unless you're trying to like burn out your graphics card or start your computer on fire. Then just get it up to 10. Now that the torso is basically done, we can add the legs, which is pretty simple. Add a circle and adjust the vertex count. I'm going with 6, but you can literally use any amount that you want. The low poly Smash Bros Sonic uses 6, the high poly one was 12 or 13 or something, I can't quite remember exactly, and I can't be bothered to look, so somewhere in that range will work pretty well for most video game models. I want a flat edge towards the back instead of a point. It's sort of personal preference, I like how the geometry deforms with the edge to the back more. I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. This is a joint with the point to the back, this one with an edge to the back. It's easier to see in top view. And I'll give them a little rotate so you can see how they deform. You can dissolve these back two edges to help with deformation as well, which is what I did here. And this was a pretty quick rig, so the weighting isn't perfect. With a little bit of love and care, either one of these could work completely fine. Here's how they look at 90. And about 60. You can totally make either one work. I just prefer edge to the back. So, I'm gonna rotate mine 30 degrees. Here's some quick math time. The easiest way to figure out how to rotate a circle to line up a flat edge along the front and back is taking 180 and dividing it by the number of sides or vertices your circle has. So this circle has 6 vertices, or 6 sides, so 180 divided by 6 is 30. If you had an 8-sided circle, it's 22.5 degrees, a 12-sided circle is 15 degrees, so on and so forth, you get the picture. So, now position your circle where you want the legs to enter the shoes and adjust the size. In edit mode, extrude the circle upwards, position and scale the other end of the legs, and make any other adjustments that you want.
two loops isn't quite enough for the legs, since it'll have to bend once the legs are rigged, so add a few more edge loops in here. Extrude another loop up into the torso and position it. And now let's make another leg, add a mirror modifier, and use the body object as the mirror object. Done! We can switch the mirror modifier on the shoes to the body as well. Select and tab back into the legs and shade smooth. Do the same with the body. Sometimes it's helpful to see an object's wireframe in solid view, which you can do in the Object Properties tab. Under Viewport Display, check Wireframe. This is why I went with the vertex counts I chose earlier. The edges kind of line up, which will make joining the legs to the body slightly easier later. Sometimes while modeling, it can kind of be hard to tell if you like how your model is looking. In these occasions, I find it helpful to create basic materials to color your shapes with. So let's do that. Switch into Material or Rendered View and go into the Material tab. Click this new button to create a new material. You can name the material here, and choose a base color down here. Click the plus sign over here to add another material slot. And with it selected, click new to create a new material. And then just keep on making materials for all the colors that we need for Sonic. There's a blue, a tan, a red, yellow, white, light gray, darker gray, and black. Now would be a good time to apply the subdivision modifier on the body, so let's archive it. In object mode, duplicate with Shift D, rename and archive. Now we can go back into the original body object and apply the subdivision modifier. Again, feel free to change the level amount before you do this to whatever you want. Render explosions. All right, now let's change the color of his chest. So select whichever faces you want to color, choose the color that you want to use, and hit a sign down here. Don't worry, we'll make it look better later, it's just a placeholder for now. Now let's add materials to the other objects. This looks a little bit more like Sonic now. Surprising, it was quick. Although his legs look kind of funny without his socks, but we'll get to those at some point. From here, we have quite a few options on what we can work on next. And I decided to add his back spikes or hair things, which to a beginner might feel like something daunting or a little difficult to add, but it's actually really quite simple with curves. So shift A, add a curve. I'm just going to use paths. In edit mode, you can see several handles, but not much geometry by default. I find it's easiest to have the first handle lined up with the origin, so I usually move my paths two units along the x-axis in edit mode before doing anything else. Now in the Object Data Properties tab, we need to define how the geometry of the path works. To start off with, set the depth of the curve, I went with 0.3 meters. I'm going to enable wireframe real quick so it's easier to see how the settings change the geometry of the curve. There's several resolutions to pay attention to. This resolution up here, which determines how many edge loops there are along the path, and this resolution down here, which adjusts the diameter vertex count. So at zero, it's four vertices, and goes up by two with each resolution. I'm going with one resolution, which will make it a six vertex circle. Now we can position this curve to be the back things, whatever you want to call them, is hedgehoggy quill things.
It might seem slightly counterintuitive, but I oftentimes start my curves a bit further ahead of where you'd expect. This way I can line up my first two handles to have the curved geometry start off flat. Since the object origin is lined up with the first handle, it's pretty easy to pivot the curve to where I want it. And I might as well make his other side back wheel thing, add a mirror modifier, set the mirror object to body, done. Now we're ready to tab into the curve and adjust its shape. When you select a handle, you can hit Alt S to adjust the diameter of the curve at that handle, or you can type in a value in this field up here. I find proportional editing quite helpful while shaping curves, so turn it on and change to a sharp fall off. Now just position and change the diameter of each handle till you like its appearance. Adjusting the diameter will always result in a circle of even radius at each vertex. If you want to adjust the scale of your curve only on one axis, tab into object mode, hit S, and then double tap whichever axis you want to use. So for example, double tap Y, and you can scale it on its local Y axis. This looks pretty good to me, might as well give it a material and name it. If you're looking to have a higher poly model, you can increase your curve resolution to whatever you want, but I'm just going to stick with this. His tail is a similar process to the back spike things. Add a curve, increase the depth, and drop the various resolutions. I'm actually going to go with a bevel resolution of zero, which is essentially a square. You can use a higher resolution if you prefer. Get it rotated. Like with the other curves, I like having the origin lined up with the first handle, so move the curve in edit mode by two units on the Y axis. And then it's just positioning it on the body. And I just moved it in edit mode so the origin no longer lines up, but it's not really going to matter anymore. It's fine. It's fine. You can do pretty much anything while modeling. That's the trick. Now it's just getting the handles positioned and determining the radius. This final handle is no longer needed, so we can delete it with X. Then assign the blue material, and name the object. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed! Please leave us a like and subscribe! If you'd like to look at our Sonic model, we have it up on our Patreon. Thank you again, stay safe, I love you all!